Hey guys. Happy Friday. Hey guys, happy Friday. How are y'all today? Yay, Thomas is here. Thomas, you always show up at the very beginning. I love how you're always very prompt and punctual. Happy Friday. Today we're talking about sacrifice. I guess I should add that in the description. I'll write the verses that we're studying in the comments so that you guys can flip to them ahead of time. How are you today? What has been the best part of your week, Thomas? 24. <laughs> 24 hours of YouTube nonstop. That sounds like a lot of YouTube, Thomas. Hey, Nan. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey, Richie. Cool. So make sure that you just have your Bible ready. And if you don't want to follow along with the physical Bible, that's okay. I'll be reading the verses too, so you can just follow along. Happy Friday, you guys. How are y'all doing today? Have you had a great week? What has been the best part of your week so far? Share in the comments. What has been the best part of your week? Hey, Richie. Nan's just following along with me. That's perfect. All right, so I'm going to talk about sacrifice today. And there are a lot of things about sacrifice in the Bible. Um, we're going to talk about what sacrifice is. We're going to talk about how sacrifice looks in our life. And later, we're going to talk about the ultimate sacrifice. So we are going to open up in prayer so if you guys want to go ahead and sorry my comments are going crazy for um, my teams but so if you guys want to bow your heads close your eyes we're going to open up this meeting in prayer so that we can have a great devotional all right dear jesus thank you so much for another friday lord thank you so much for each and every hipster watching this video lord i pray that your words can just um, penetrate our hearts and that we can learn more about you and about sacrifice lord thank you so much for um, the opportunity that we get to meet and um, i pray that we just are filled with um, peace and your love as we learn more about you lord in your name we pray amen sweet all right welcome 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 happy friday so it's Memorial Weekend, right? Long weekend, and we get to rest and relax with family, and we um, get to celebrate Memorial Day on Monday. So I wanted to talk about sacrifice today because I feel like sacrifice is talked about a lot in the Bible, but it can be kind of confusing, right? They sacrifice lambs, they sacrifice cows, they sacrifice a lot of things but we don't necessarily do that today, right? So we're gonna read a few things about sacrifice today. So if you have your Bible, we are going to open up to John, excuse me, Genesis. It's the first book of the Bible, Genesis 22. Hey Chase. So if you have a Bible, we're opening up to Genesis 22. So Genesis 22 is a story about Abraham. And if you've heard about Abraham before, he has, well, many sons, but he also has a son named Isaac. And we're going to, going to read about a time when God asked Abraham to make a big sacrifice. So before we read this, what does sacrifice mean? What do you guys... How would you define sacrifice? How would you all define sacrifice? 
What does the word sacrifice mean to you guys? Have you heard it before? Have you maybe sacrificed something before in some way? What does the word sacrifice mean? Is it positive or negative? What are your thoughts on the meaning of sacrifice? Okay, so Thomas says, sacrifice is like giving. And basically, yeah, it's kind of like giving something, right? Giving something that you love that means a lot to you for a better purpose, right? So a lot of times sacrifice is used for worship in the Bible. And we are going to read a story about Abraham in Genesis 22 when God asked him to sacrifice something. So in Genesis 22, we're going to start in verse 1. So if you guys are ready, I'm going to start reading. So just follow along. You can listen or you can read in your own Bible. Genesis 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So what did God ask Abraham to do at the very beginning of this story? I'll read it again. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. So what did God ask Abraham to do in this story at the beginning? Okay, so Ryan says it's kind of like a ritual. Um, Ryan says it's a positive word. Jeffrey said it was a ritual. And Thomas said sacrifice is like giving. Hey, Olivia, welcome. I'm glad you guys are joining us on this Friday. So we're talking about sacrifice, Olivia, and we just read about Abraham and how God asked Abraham to make a big sacrifice. And that sacrifice was to offer up his son. It says his son who he loved so much, his only son. Hey, Joseph. So do you think Abraham, so do you think Abraham was happy or sad that God asked him to sacrifice his son? The word sacrifice basically means, I'll pull up the exact definition for you guys, but it basically just means to surrender um, something as an offering to God. So God was asking Abraham to give up his son for worship for God. So we're going to read about how Abraham responds. Because if any of you guys um, know how much your parents love you, you would know that this is something that would make your parents extremely sad. But Abraham, we're going to read about his response to the sacrifice. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and he rose and went to the place which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said, stay here with the donkey and I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took his hand to the fire and the knife, and they both went together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father, here I am, son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So, Abraham, yes, Jeffrey, you're exactly right. God was testing Abraham to see how strong his faith was and to see how much he trusted God to provide for him. So 
Think about something that you love very much. Think about a person. Think about something that you just love very much and you do not want to live without. Whether it's your favorite dog or your favorite t-shirt or something that is your very favorite that you would not want to live without. And imagine God asking you to give it up, to not see it again. Would that make you upset or would you be proud to do that? What do you guys think? Because this is what Abraham was feeling. God was saying, give me something that you love so much. Do you think that's an easy decision for us to make? So this teaches us about obedience, right? Because Abraham wasted no time. He, he trusted that God would provide the lamb for the burnt offering for his son. So let's keep on reading. So they went, both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar and laid the wood in order and on top of his son Isaac. Then Abraham reached out his hand, took the knife, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do not do not do anything to him for now i know that you fear god seeing you have not withheld your son your only son from me and abraham lifted his eyes and looked behold was a ram to sacrifice so abraham called the place the lord will provide so because abraham was obedient god blessed him and he provided for him in that moment so he did not need to give up um, his son who he loved so much. Let me read some of your comments. So, yes, Richie, this is a very sad story. It would make you sad if you had to give up something that you loved so much. But God provided for Abraham because he knew that he had faith in him and that he trusted that he would provide. So, now that we learned about what sacrifice looks like, let's go to a verse in John, which talks about a different type of sacrifice. So John 15 is where we're going to go. And this is where we're going to learn about how we, yes, Jeffrey, I wouldn't say being proud, I would trust in God for his calling. So I would, um, we're gonna go to John 15, and this is a dip different type of sacrifice. It's the sacrifice that God calls us to make. Um, so let's go to John 15, 12 through 13. So in today's world, right, does God call us to sacrifice lambs or sheep or anything? Do we have to burn um, sacrifices in a ritual to worship God today? Does he ask us to do that? No, he does not. God does not call us to sacrifice lambs in the way that they did for the Old Testament because the Holy Spirit is within us so we can worship freely without doing those sacrifices that they used to do. So in John 15, 12 through 13, I'm going to read to you what God calls um, a, what God calls a great commandment and this commandment is about sacrifice. So John 15, 12 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So as God loves us, he's calling us to love other people. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. I'm going to read that one more time. It says, Greater love has no one than this, than, to than someone lay down his life for his friends. So that right there is an example of what sacrifice looks like in, in the New Testament, right? So no longer do we need to sacrifice lambs 
on altars or um, sacrifice sacred sheep um, to worship. But God is calling us to love people with all of our heart. And it says, even that you, you would be willing to lay down your life for your friend. That is what sacrifice looks like in our hearts. God commands us to love others with everything in the same way that he loves us. So that's a different type of sacrifice, right? Can you guys think of anyone in your lives who have sacrificed things for you? Have, whether it's your parents or friends, has anyone in your life made a sacrifice for you? Meaning that they, um, that something, they either did something really big to show that, they're, that they loved you or excuse me, or did they spend a lot of time with you and sacrifice their time to make sure that you were taken care of? Or whether it was just a friend who sacrificed a lot of money to get you a gift for your birthday. There are so many sacrifices that friends and family members do for us. What are some sacrifices that someone has made for you? So Thomas said his mother and granddaddy when they would make scrapbooks with him. So time, they sacrifice their time to spend time with him. That's great. We have a lot of sisters and best friends. Parents, yeah. Parents are people who sacrifice things a lot. My mom has sacrificed a lot for me by helping pay for college and just doing so much for me. So there's been a lot of people who have made sacrifices for us in our lives, right? Who are some other people in your lives? Sweet. Parents, yeah, parents are good people who always make sacrifices for their kids. This verse is talking about friendship, Jeffrey, how to treat others with love. All right, let's move on to how we can make sacrifices for other people. So using this verse, I'll read it one more time. John 15, 12 through 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. So how can we sacrifice make sacrifices for our friends and family what are some things that we can do what does this verse teach us it says love one another as god has loved you that is a very easy way to sacrifice um, our selfishness for the needs of others so if a friend is maybe upset or sad because they had a family member pass away or they're really missing their family during this time, a sacrifice that we can make or a way that we can love them is by reaching out to them and telling them, I'm praying for you, I love you, maybe make them a card. Those are ways that we can show love to them um, and it be really selfless, right? A form of sacrifice. So Thomas says, it teaches us to pray and become healthy again. And talking a lot about friends who are in our lives. Great comments, you guys. Friends and family, yeah, those are people that we can make sacrifices for. What are some things that we can do to show them the love that God has for us and for them? Something else you can do is just tell them, right? Remind them, hey, God loves you. Hey, God is always with you and that you're praying for them. That is a great way to remind them of God's love. Friends and family, more family. Yep, great answer. So next we are going to talk about the greatest and ultimate sacrifice. Which do you think that is? What is the ultimate 
sacrifice that has been made. And Jeffrey mentioned it earlier. If you want to scroll back in the comments or really think about it. When we're talking about God's love, we've read the story about Abraham. What is the ultimate sacrifice? So in Abraham, God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. But fast forward to when Jesus was alive, what did God do? What was the ultimate sacrifice that was done for you and for me and everyone else? This verse can, this story can be found in the verse John 3.16 and 3.17. If you guys are familiar with that. Thomas said, when Jesus becomes a savior. So the ultimate sacrifice is the one that God made, right? So God chose to send Jesus on earth and sacrifice him on a cross for you and for me so that he can take all of our sins and so that the Holy Spirit can live within us. And so we don't have to do lamb sacrifices anymore. We don't have to worship God through um, burning something on a stake in that way. We can just talk to God by praying and loving others, right? Good job, guys. So let's learn about this ultimate sacrifice. If you've never heard it before, it's an exciting day to learn about it, right? So John, 3 verse 16 through 17 is where we're going to be and I would love 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 if you all could either turn your ears up and really listen to this verse or if you have your Bible open read it with me because this is one that talks about the ultimate sacrifice the most important thing that has happened in our lives is that God sacrificed his son for us okay so let's read about it John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So there you have it. That is the ultimate sacrifice that God made. He loved you and me and the world so much that he gave his only son. And whoever believes in God will not perish, right? But have eternal life. And God did not send his son to, to condemn us. Meaning he didn't send Jesus to say, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. But in order that he might save all of our hearts through him, through believing in him. So that is the ultimate sacrifice that we're talking about. And isn't it great to learn that we don't have to sacrifice animals to talk to God anymore. We don't have to um, sacrifice those things that don't really matter, but it's important that we love others through sacrificial love and that we are selfless and we love others in the way that God loves us. Yes, so I'm going to read some comments. Ryan said, Jesus died for us and for our sins. Amen, he did. And Jeffrey said that is his favorite verse. I think that's a great one. If you don't have any Bible verses memorized, that's okay. But this would be a great one to start with. Just put it on your heart, write it down, put it on your wall, and read it and memorize it because it talks about the ultimate sacrifice. All right, so that's all I had about sacrifice today. And I hope you guys learned something new and enjoyed following along. I love getting to hang out with you guys on Fridays at four. Um, is anyone doing anything fun for this long weekend? Are you relaxing by the pool or seeing, um, seeing family? Well, I hope that you guys have a really great weekend, and I hope that I can see you guys again soon, very soon. Make sure you guys are staying safe and healthy, and I'll be praying for you all. See you guys next week.
Bye.